Right, hello, welcome back to another video. So today we'll be carrying on with our blueprint examples um, and we're gonna be using um, 3D exposed widgets to uh, kind of control parameters. So we're gonna be building up a little bit of a UI, um, make it nice, easy to work with uh, interface for our blueprint. So we're actually gonna be starting with the light example from a few weeks ago. Uh, if you remember, it's just a light inside a blueprint and we've exposed parameters for the color uh, and the intensity. Uh, and we're just gonna kind of take this uh, and build on that a little bit uh, and make it a bit easier to use. So, first thing I'm gonna do is just duplicate that. Um, and then we'll call this exposed. Uh, and we'll just have a quick run through what it's doing. Um, so I'm gonna delete this from the event graph and we're just gonna do all the stuff in the construction script. Um, do go back and check the video if this is all new to you, but all we're doing here is setting the point light color uh, and setting the light intensity. So um, first thing I'm gonna do is add a static mesh. Now in here, we have uh, a light fixture. I think we've got a lamp. Uh, here we are, lamp wall, something like that. Um, just from the starter content. Now, what we might wanna be doing with this, very common use case, uh, quite often we'll have uh, two lights with a, a light one casting shadows from the light source and then another one kind of over here uh, as a sort of fill light that might fill the room. A um, Couple of advantages to that. Uh, the sort of smaller light source or the, the light source light itself can be a shadow casting light uh, and give you a nice small radius. Um, so quite a sort of cheap, efficient way of doing nice cast shadows um, without having to have a huge radius light. And then the actual um, kind of fill light can be a bit bigger and maybe not cast shadows. Um, so what we might want to have to do uh, is adjust the location of this light. So if I keep this as the shadow casting one, uh, yeah, we'll work with this one light for now. Um, we can always update things later. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a variable which I'm gonna call light location. And I'm gonna set that to be a vector instance editable and then in my construction script, I'm gonna take that location and I'm gonna use it as an offset. Uh, so I'm gonna take my point light, add local, or maybe just do set. Set local, set relative location, that's the thing. Uh, so this is gonna be in local space. We're gonna take that um, point light relative to the parent and just set the relative location. Uh, and the thing we're gonna set it to is this light location. So we just compile this. If I come to my um, my blueprint in the scene, it's not that one, that's the old one. This is my new one. Uh, and we've now got this uh, exposed parameter and I can change my offset, um, which is nice and handy. Give it a little bit of something in Z. And you can see here we're getting those shadows, um, whatever we need to do. Uh, but what we can also do is have a, a widget, have something that allows us to, to sort of move that. Currently I can select the blueprint and I can move the blueprint around, but I'd quite like to be able to just set the, select the light and move that. Uh, and so we can, very simple thing to do. Just take a light location. Uh, any of the vectors or any variable types that are set to vector, uh, we can change to have this thing here. So show 3D widget. If I enable that, it's just gonna give me a little um, handle with a name, um, which lets you do exactly that. Set my local uh, light position, um, which is really cool. Makes things very easy. Now, one thing we might wanna do with this, um, for location, that makes sense, but we might wanna also kind of like add one for, let's say the radius. Well, if I go back into my blueprint variables uh, and let's say light, radius, uh, make this instance editable. If I set this to be a float, uh, we don't have a value for um, for exposed widget. Something we can do here, show 3D widget, something we can do on a vector, but not on uh, a light radius, or sorry, light, not on a float. Um, so actually we're gonna keep this as a vector, uh, and all we're gonna do is take our, our light radius value, we're gonna break that out into three and we're just gonna use the X component. Um, and so effectively, 
if I go into my thing 10 on 3D radius, right, radius. Um, so how far we move it along, it's with the x-axis I said, wasn't it? So let's use y, sort of horizontally. Um, how far we move it across here is going to give us the radius of our light. Um, so if I take my y, and then reference to my point light, set radius, uh, it's called attenuation radius is the one. I'm just going to take that y distance. And we can see we've got a nice, easy to use dynamic control in um, in 3D of our light and our light radius. That appears to have disappeared. Why has my light disappeared? Aha, is it because it's negative? Yes. Interesting. Notice how the, um, the wireframe of the light being inverted or being negative radius is actually giving me a sort of crunchy, uh, hard-edged, low um, polygon curve, whereas the main curve is actually really high-res. Not noticed that before. Well, that's no problem. We can either just take the values this way, or we could just do an absolute on it. And so ABS, absolute, uh, will just take the positive part of that and just ignore any negative values, so it doesn't matter which way around um, the light radius we move. Each side's going to be exactly the same. Um, you can see we're adjusting that there. Now, this is working really well. Uh, we could do similar things for intensity, all of that. But one thing that possibly doesn't make sense is it's only taking the x component. So the z and the um, other one, y, no, z and x. So these two axes aren't doing anything. Um, and this one is. Now, it's up to us, really. Uh, you could maybe make this a light control, and then you could use the one as intensity, one as radius, one as something else, whatever you like. Um, or we can kind of lock them. So here it's a vector. Um, it becomes much easier to edit in 3D, um, but maybe a little bit less easy to edit in 2D. We still got uh, 2D in, in the number. Um, we still can go in here and scrub this, obviously. So what I might do for something like this uh, is just fix the other two values. Uh, and just set them to be zero within our, uh, our blueprint. And that's actually really easy to do. So first things first in the construction script, I might create a new section here. And all I'm gonna do is take that light radius value and you get, and then set light radius. Set it to be itself. Well, that's not what I wanna do. If I just break this split, and split. I'm going to take the y value and just plug it in back into itself. So we're keeping the y data because that's the one that we've set up to do anything and we're just forcing x and z to be zero. And now if I go back into the world I won't be able to move along that axis because anytime I do it's immediately getting reset back to zero. So a um, little sort of usability step you can include if you like. Um, and so now we can go in and set up our, our lights however we like and set up little controls, 3D widgets, um, give ourselves a lot of nice control. Um, and we can do it here as well, obviously we can adjust this that way, but sometimes it's nice to use a, a 3D uh, widget to do this. Um, just do that again. Uh, maybe take this light intensity, currently setting there. Well, if I delete it from the blueprint, this is now not in use anywhere. Let me just check. Oh, that's radius. That's not what I wanted. Light intensity. Because it's now not in use anywhere, I can change its variable type. Set that to be a vector. And I'm going to exp not expose, sorry. I'm going to show 3D widget. Um, and then I'm going to do the same thing here. And what I might do, if I just create a sequence node, keep things nice and neat and tidy. So my sequence, I'm just going to do this thing first. Second thing I want to do is set light intensity. That's a function. I want to do set this. Here we go. And I'm going to set it to be itself. But in this case, I'm just going to use the x value uh, if I split this. So now, not x, let's do it with z. Uh, let's do that. There we go. So now I'm going to have another um, 3D component. 
in this case I've got a light intensity component and how high it is is going to be how bright our light is so I'm zeroing out the x and y because I don't want those to do anything and what I might do here with my sequence add another pin so the first thing I'm going to do is sort of control my variable um, parts and you can obviously add more in here if we need to as long as the last pin here is coming to our actual code um, and I might just need this up put some reroute nodes in just double clicking on a line there we go make this nice and clear and easy to read always keep your code as, as easy to read as you can uh, I'm just fiddling now there we go um, so we're going to zero out the the data we don't need just to keep those UI elements where we want them and now take the the Z height and then we're just going to take our new intensity and we're going to set that to be our light intensity get light intensity now if we just set this directly again this is a uh, vector so we need to split out and only use the Z value because that's what we we set um, it's not going to give us very much visually because the values the range of values is, is no good if we set this up to like 5,000 50,000 it works but it's well off screen no good there um, so we just need a multiplier so if I set that to be maybe I don't know 50 something like that let's have a look so about 200 so if I multiply it by a thousand good starting point maybe let's say 5,000 maybe because we're not dealing with any accurate numbers here necessarily we're just looking for a nice visual way to be able to control our light intensity and now we've got a nice control maybe too high let's do 1,000 here we are so we can place our light we can move where the light is and we're directly using that location and we can also grab the radius and intensity it's pretty cool I wonder just sort of thinking out of the top of my head here uh, it might be quite nice if the light intensity sort of slider or 3d widget stayed on top of the light location 3d widget so we should be able to do that though so rather than setting these to zero we're going to set them to be the location is that going to work mm, yes maybe uh, let's test it out so we get the light location split this and plug the X and Z in from there and then the X and Y in from here what does that look like and there we are so now our light location is controlling the sort of position of our light and then our height value is controlling the light location uh, the, the intensity and it's staying on top and it's being added uh, not quite there so we kind of need to take the location and add the intensity onto it so we can just do that so in this case the light intensity <laughs> that's maybe getting a little bit complicated so the light intensity here wants to be this plus this and that will give us light intensity Z but now our widget is doing the right thing uh, is it light intensity set that to zero maybe created a, a loop here which isn't really working yeah you can see that's going up and up and up hmm so what do I do want to do here light intensity wants to just be light intensity that's not going to work well maybe not worth that step um, maybe we just keep it as is so that the light intensity is over here but yeah nice interesting or interactive way uh, of building up a little UI for your objects um, for your blueprints uh, definitely when it comes to doing things like lighting where you really can be quite expensive especially nice dynamic light with lots of shadows um, you really want to be kind of accurate with your performance you don't want to just make your radius a lot higher than it needs to be so being able to really adjust this in 3d uh, based on your scene I think is a really nice way um, to work and you can just bring in your light put it in the right place grab the values we probably need to set some default values for these just to set those values on initial things but we can do that so light intensity uh, we're using the Z 
and let's say intensity wants to start at 50 and the radius we're using the Y and we'll start at, I don't know, 5000 maybe. And just see how that works now. If I bring in a new light, here we are. Oh, that radius is huge. Um, do give it a go, do try it out with your blueprints, uh, definitely a nice little, um, say, interactive way of doing things. Uh, and as always, uh, if you have any questions or comments or anything you'd like to see on the channel, do let me know. Uh, and a big thank you to all my patrons for supporting the channel, um, and I will see you all next time.